watching Property TV. Hello and welcome to Property Question Time. I'm Stephen Galpin and this is the programme where you can have your property related questions answered by our team of property experts. And joining me today is Hayley Andrews, CEO of Your Freedom Empire and property investor. Welcome Hayley. Hello. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. And on your right is John Howard, property developer, TV property expert and lots of other things too, I think. Too many to mention. <laughs> too many to <laughs> too mention. Too many to mention. <laughs> okay, good to see you John. Thank you. Okay, well, we'll get straight on with the questioning. Um, and Hayley, the northern areas of the country have seen a revival of property values recently, no doubt as a result of the government's promise to level up. And of course, given the hope of HS2. However, it would seem things have changed. Leveling up seems to be unclear in terms of what exactly it means. And HS2 has been reduced in terms of serviced areas towards the northeast. Would the panel expect to see a reduction of values, therefore, reflecting these disappointing announcements? They are very disappointing We'll wait for our Conservative panel yeah. members. <laughs> <laughs> we'll grill you for this later, John. <laughs> they are disappointing announcements, but I don't think that we are going to see a reduction in, in prices as a result of those announcements. The, I don't think that um, the demand um, or the uplift in those areas has come from you know, solely HS2 and, of course, the promise of our levelling up, <laughs> um, which is the government's slogan since 2019. So a bit yeah. disappointing that, well, you know... Hey, they are getting on with it. But anyway, after you, true, ladies, ladies, true, first, ladies true. first. We are going to... I think it's the end of this month, isn't it, where we will have a clearer picture of who it's actually for. And, well, it's uh, very clear. It... It's all it's all about levelling up the north from the, the south to the north. And, yeah. well, uh, and, John, and John, it's not clear on who it's it, actually it'll who it'll will just, get access it'll to just it. just never happen. The, the, the south will never be level with the north. Well, that's good. So, I mean, uh, you, so, so <laughs> say someone living in central exactly. London in a very smart apartment. <laughs> you, noti I mean, you noticed the way I, uh, yeah, I, 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 I did. That I mean, I mean, I, I think I think Hayley, you're absolutely right. What you've said. Um, well, let me explain yeah. why why I've said that, uh, because it, it could seem that I'm not acknowledging the fact that this is bad news. It is bad news, of course, HS2, um, you, you know, uh, you've got the Eastern Line, which has uh, been scrapped. You've got um, the Northern uh, Powerhouse uh, rail link that has been uh, downgraded, and then Manchester to uh, Leeds through Bradford, which has also been abandoned. Um, so, but we still have, of course, um, phase one and 2A, which is London, between London, West Midlands and um, Crewe, <laughs> off the top of my head. But of course, that's not going to be finished for, uh, you know, we're looking, well, it's anyone's guess really, but we're looking at, you know, between 2029 20, and 30, 33 or 20, probably 2033. 30, 30, 30, yeah. So I don't think the decision there would have been made to buy in those areas just as a result of that. Of course, as investors, we make sure that we look at the infrastructure plans and things like that, and we hope for that. But as a smart investor, you don't invest on that hope because we don't have a crystal ball. We don't know what price, how that's going to improve the prices. With the levelling up fund, the reason I don't think that, uh, well, it's happening still. There's 4.8 billion, is it, overall? Yeah, I'm surprised at you, Hayley, because I thought you might actually... Um, I, I agree with your first point about I don't think it makes that much difference to these areas, and I think the property price is going... I think you're absolutely right. But I think you've been a bit harsh on the government and what they've managed to achieve here. And I think, I personally, and first of all... Um, I think it's lack of measure in success of the schemes that are in place, which is the big question mark. I, I, I think that the fund will still, you know, it's there. We're going to have confirmation at the end of the month on how we can spend it. What on do you, know, what it. Do you think £4.5 billion pounds can, can I do just, can I, section of the look, country? Can I just say, at the end of the day, they have um, changed what the routes and what they were going to do with HS2. I accept that. But they've also brought a number of uh, initiatives forward which are quicker and cheaper to do to enable some of these routes to be brought back into service yeah. and so on. So it's not all bad news. 
uh, at all on that side of things. I don't think it was. It, I don't think it's been. Um, it was disappointing. I, I think. Well, but it, it's not. I don't think it's a. I just don't think it was sold very well, to be honest, mm. because there are some benefits, there are real benefits to that quickly. And also, not everyone wants to see um, new railway lines cut through the countryside. So there's a lot of people who are very, uh, very pleased. Yeah. And, and a lot of it, a lot of the work that's going to be done is going to be done in the next two or three years. So it's going to enable and help some of these. And I would be looking at some of these villages outside. Uh, small towns outside the big cities because they're the ones who are going to benefit from these lines being re being replaced and done quicker. But also so, benefiting from the level up fund, leveling well, up fund as well. I mean, the, the, the whole idea of the fund is is if, correct me if I'm wrong, but to actually you know bring infrastructure and bring employment yeah. and people back to the forgotten towns. Yeah. So we're well, not no, and the town fund, by the way. 117 towns, I believe, are getting £25 million to spend how they want on different initiatives within the town. So if you can pick one of those towns and ride on the back of the fact that the regeneration is happening in those areas... What's an earth, well, do you think, £25 million? Quite a lot, <laughs> quite a, a lot. Town, yeah. Quite a lot, because it's going on specific jobs. The fact, the uh, developments, the fact is that every town is virtually a Tory, a Conservative uh, has a Conservative MP is just, is just really a, uh, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, ironic. Ironic. <laughs> but, you know, but, thank you. But, but John, John uh, let's just, we're looking at the values of properties here yeah. in these various areas. Yes. And, and the question really is whether yes. they'll go up or down. But I, I just find, well, whichever government it is, they're just totally unrealistic about what they think money will do and what schemes will do. And let me just finish. Two things. One is the timing, how long all this is going to take, yep. when it's going to be. We do They've all, already got the money, by the way. We do all suffer from this double counting, double announcements. You know, this was an announcement that was made five years ago and it's just been regurgitated. The original money was never spent. But the, but the real point is... Some of, the, some of these town funds are not in the hands of people who can really make objective commercial decisions. That's the problem, and it gets wasted. What I would say on that is that the town fund has already been paid out, mm -hmm. as, I'm, as far as I'm aware. And what it will do, it, it will generate certain areas of towns and certain buildings that, that have been left. I've done a lot of regeneration over the years, and... What happens is it, it, it's a kickstart to that area. It gives people confidence to invest. So the people watching the show may say, right, let me find out where the, where the town fund's been spent and let me look at these areas no, and see if there's any areas that... 100% absolutely. Increase, yeah. No, I've always said, you know, as part of your investment strategy, you should always look at government infrastructure plans, yeah, regeneration absolutely. and yeah. funds available, etc. So I'm not saying that we shouldn't be doing that. Um, and I'm not discounting how valuable that is to an area either. The question was to say, is there going to be a shift in, you know, a reduction in house prices as a result of this I, news? I agree with you. I don't think that there no. will be because neither is immediate effect. Well, I, I agree with your well, early point. Is I don't think they ever went up much because of well, that. Well, exactly. Place. I mean, the areas yeah. that we're talking about here in question that would have access, you know, to the funds and things like that. Um, well, the majority of the funds, you know, yeah. bigger pots than the yeah. twenty-five million, is going to be areas that have they are forgotten areas. They are deprived. So they the are, are they have the not experienced the same growth as no. other parts of the UK. It's a much slower pace than any growth that you know they have seen. Is, is nowhere near the national average. So in answer to that question, the reason I say no is because although it's disappointing, but there's positives behind it and there's still money available and we may all, not know how it's... I think all positives, to be fair, Hayley. You, you, you're, you're just being a bit negative on, 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 on some of it, which I no, can I'm sort of No, I'm highlighting both sides. I don't do negativity. Do you, do you know what, though, John? I, this HS2 business, I mean, it's nonsense to me. For, 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 it's going to be $150 billion by the time they're finished, isn't it? OK. Now, have you ever worked out how many social homes you could build for £150 billion? I think it's... I 
I think it's... I'm, I'm, it I'm all for HS2, so mm. I, I'm going to have to disagree with you on that. But it is massively over budget. It's massively, you know, it's been pushed back many, yeah. many times. This was a £25 billion pound project. Originally. Was, yeah. but, but governments, yeah. no government is any good at infrastructure, basically. Yeah. They're, they're like we there's well, one guy with a shovel, and that's why it's taking so yeah. long I mean, it's and costing so much it's money. Crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. It's okay. crazy. Yeah. All right, well, we're going to have to leave that one there. Me <laughs> um, and John fell out on that one. Yeah, <laughs> well, we did. I think all we can presume is John's not going to be voting Labour next time. I Definitely know. not. Right, OK. I'm not going to be voting <laughs> Labour either. <laughs> but... I, th I just don't think I'm going to be not voting. Anyway, so don't <laughs> Leave anyway. it to fate. <laughs> you need to help John, to get um, out there and vote. I've recently bought a new home and I'm considering a loft conversion. In order to assess whether the cost of this will reflect in the final added value and therefore be worth doing, can the panel advise on how I can address this? For example, would it be a fair comparison to look at the cost of a similar house in the same area, perhaps with an extra bedroom to mine? I understand that I do not need local authority permission for this conversion. However, if a roof light window is fitted, does that require permission? So there's two questions there. Really. Okay. Well, the first question is, um, you know, doing a loft, a loft conversion uh, these days is not cheap. And the reason it's not cheap because building materials are going up dramatically. Um, they have done for the last year or two. Um, and they continue to do so, sadly. About 35%, thing, isn't about it? About 35% on bit, uh, over the last 18 months. Um, in terms of um, looking at other properties similar, yes, I would say that um, I would say that, 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 that that's a good way of, of, um, of working out what your property's worth. But also, you know, these estate agents, you can always ring an estate agent and say, look, I'm looking to a loft conversion. What do you think the house is worth now? And what do you think it's worth when it's done? Uh, and most agents will give you that advice for free. No reason why they wouldn't. They're hoping once it's done, you're going to put it on the market, of course. So don't tell them you're not. But certainly that's one way of getting the advice. In terms of doing a loft conversion, um, Haley's probably far better qualified than I am to speak about that. I'm assuming it, I'm assuming it, it, it doesn't need permission, but it needs building regulation building approval. Regs, yeah. So actually, it's as good as the same, really. You need to get building regs on it. And as for the skylight, Hayley, what's the answer to that? It depends. There you go. It depends. So, so I've just thrown Hayley a, a, a hospital pass there, haven't I? Has it got anything to do with which way you vote? No, let's hope not. Well, you, you certainly need building regs for, for, yeah, for, you for, for, for a skylight. So on that basis... If you're um, adding a window in or a dormer yeah. or raising yeah. the roof, yeah, yeah. we Any need planning permission. It's changing the permission. visual out. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay, lovely. Well, that's all um, we've got. Um, sorry. Sorry, just very quickly, I would say the best people to ask on any question like that is the council and they will give you a straightforward answer and it won't cost you any money. Okay, lovely. Well, that's all we've got time for in this half of the show. So join me again after the break. You are watching Property TV. You are watching Property TV. Hello and welcome back to part two of Property Question Time. I'm here with Hayley Andrews and John Howard. Welcome back, guys. Thank you. So, uh, Hayley, your second question. I've made the decision to sell our family home and downscale now that the children have left home. I've had three separate estate agents view the property and each has come up with a totally different valuation. I wonder where we've heard that one before. But, <laughs> um, can the panel please advise on how I can assess which agent is right? So it's good that she's actually got more than one valuation because some people don't. And um, so I would always recommend to have three carried out. Um, the top is normally too ambitious, which isn't you know, a bad thing. The middle is normally about right and, and the bottom is normally <laughs> too low. Um, uh, so, I mean, normally somewhere between the, the middle is, uh, is, is about right. But things that you can do to, to check it out uh, yourself without it costing you any money is have a look on the market, what listings are, are up within your local area, mm -hmm. similar types of properties, style, age, um, condition, all things like that. Um, number of bedrooms, sizes, etc. Um, so you can have a look at what other properties are being listed for 
Um, and also have a look at the flow in that market as well. Are, are people actually making offers on those properties? Are they sold subject to contract? You know, look at the number of listings versus the number of uh, actual offers that have been made. But of course, you don't know what offer has been made from that information. So the next thing then to do after understanding the flow and who your competition is or who, who your property is going to be in, comp um, in competition with, yes, that's yeah, the word that's right. I'm looking for. <laughs> the next thing you can actually do is go and have a look at sold data on regi land registry. That's yeah. where I would always go um, within the last six months. Yeah. Uh, again, same size. Uh, style. I mean, Hayley, on an earlier show, we talked about should agents have any sort of qualifications, yes. etc. <laughs> now, we, we all know what happens with agents. Um, where it's a good market, it's very difficult to get instructions, so they'll tend to tell you what you want to hear yeah. in terms yeah. of your value. And if the market's the other way, they'll downvalue it and try and get get it on their books as cheap as possible to stand some chance of selling it. I think it. that's a bit harsh. To well, it may be a bit harsh, but it's a, it's a general principle, John. Well, it's your general principle. And, and I don't I, think it's and mine. I just, you want to try living around here and see what you're, you're a niche market, your estate agents, yeah. though, aren't they? Well, w one, one trick I would say, one, not one trick, but one, one thing I would say is that if you're not sure what the price is and the agent isn't too sure, because it's a matter of opinion sometimes, yeah. especially yeah. the more yeah. expensive the yeah. property, it's so yeah. hard to say, is offers in the region of yes. or offers over. Yeah. Because that gives you a bit, a bit of a bit of leeway. leeway you know, yeah. if you get offers, you know, you you then don't have to accept an offer that's over. You know, um, but you might get three. You might say, well, we've got three offers here. You know, over the asking price and decide. I mean, at the moment, uh, anything certainly in Norfolk and Suffolk's coming on the market that that is of you know of quality. We're getting seven, eight, nine viewers yeah. straight away. Mm. Yeah, amazing. But I think, I think, yeah. John, what we were discussing was whether whether agents should have any qualifications. And yes. I do, I do wonder. What did I say? If if that they no, it wasn't your program. I don't think. Um, I, I wonder if the agent should have some kind of qualification to give out valuations. Yeah, I think so. You know, it it, it could I almost be Ro a separate. Ro Roper put some framework in place for that, didn't they? Mm. Um, so I think that was back in 2019, and I'm not sure when it's going to come into place, but it's likely to be this year. Yeah, you've got the um, National Association of Estate Agents who yeah. do some training, and, and, I, yeah. and, and I think, you know, at the end of the day, some of these, some, especially the, the big corporate um, estate agents, uh, they do a lot of training. They t they spend yeah. a lot of money on training. Yeah. Some of them very good. They do. Yes, but it's not that sort of agent that will do the naughty stuff, is it? it, it, it it's the smaller independents who are either desperate for instruction or desperate for cheap properties that will tend to just the go is, over the line but, but, a little but, but, bit. Let's but, put it that you way. Know, the, no, law, I, the law has changed a lot over yeah, the years. It's a, lot it's a of law regulated in place, industry. It's more regulated it, than it was. Yeah, there's a, it's a regulated mm. industry. Not like the there's old days no, when you were doing it. There's just it's no like, qualification at this moment in time, but I think it would be good yeah, uh, for, for yeah. both estate agents mm. and lettings agencies. Yes. I just, uh, the question that we had posed before, of course, made reference to the fact that where you're handling um, substantial assets, usually money, yeah. um, you know, there's a lot of regulation in mm -hmm. place. And yet where, where you're dealing with your probably your life's major assets, yes. yeah. there is no regulation, yeah. which just seems well, a little is, bizarre. There is regulation in a place little. for estate agents and lettings agencies. Um, mm. So, yeah, they mm. they are regulated. Well, there's just no qualification. No, they tend to be covered by, by the ethos of the sort of um, industry representative, like the National Association yeah. of Estate Agents. Who you, are very good, by the yeah, way. You, you agree to conform to their standards, etc. Oh, and the same with, same with, is it Arla on the letting? Arla on yeah, the letting. It's got yeah. Arla, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, okay, good. All right, well, that answers that. Thank you, Hayley. Um, John, your, yes. sec your second question. Um, I'm recent I've recently put my house on the market and I'm having lots of viewings, but mm -hmm. no offers. I don't think my expectations as far as price is concerned. Put it on with the wrong gauge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, did, you, did, you didn't choose the middle you one. You didn't choose the middle one. <laughs> didn't take Hayley's yeah. advice, did they? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Go on. Okay. And I'm having lots of viewings, but no offers. I don't think my expectations as far as price is concerned uh, are wrong, um, as I followed the agent's advice. What can I do to pin down the reason for the lack of firm interest? I have conducted a number of viewings myself at the request of the agents, but they have done some accompanied viewings. Uh, I'm just stuck. Okay. 
Well, the first thing I would say, if you've got a good agent on, on the case, and they may well have a good agent, then they will, they will be ringing up all the people who are viewed, and they will be asking for their feedback. And that feedback should there be, then be honestly given to the vendor, the owner of the property. And if they get that feedback, some agents don't like delivering bad news, of course. Mm -hmm. But if they're honest with that, then they should know why it's not selling. Maybe it's on a busy road. Maybe it looks cluttered and it needs to be decluttered, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and a bit of staging where people where people come in and help you make it look more attractive in terms of, you know, furniture and so on. It might be that um, they've got dogs and every time you know, it smells of do smells doggy or catty. It could be that the dog's running around everywhere. It needs to be put in a cage when people come around. It might be that the gravel outside is, is, is all old. And you know, to put a bit of fresh gravel down doesn't cost a lot of money. There's lots of things you can do, but they're quite right. They need to know why it's not selling. Mm. And the person to ask really is the agent. And if the agent isn't being honest, I would ask, one or two of their best friends to say, look, what is wrong with my house? Be honest with me. And they'll go, well, it needs decorating. It needs this. It needs that. You need someone to be honest mm -hmm. with them. And once you get that information, you can either, either drop the price a little bit to, to, to bear that in mind when people come around. At the end of the day, if you've had lots of viewings, my honest opinion is it's too expensive. Yeah, I would End say of. That. End of. There's a price for everything. I think. I think the other interesting thing is almost psychological, isn't it? You, you've got to remember that although your your house is old hat to you and you're used to it yeah, and, and exactly. you've looked at it, you're actually selling something that's probably going to be someone's dream. Yeah. Exactly. You know, it's their yeah. big ambition. It's their yeah. dream. It may be their first home, yeah. and you've got to make it appear so. Yeah. You've got to, yeah. And I mean, this is what they say on on new developments about brochures, for instance. The brochure will never sell the flat, but what it will sells do, the dream. it sells the dream. Yeah. It's sits yeah. on the coffee yeah. table at home and yeah. this is what I'm buying and aren't I yeah. proud of it. There's a reason why you bake bread and uh, have fresh coffee on the go. Yeah. Yeah. Because it smells you nice can, and it smells homely. And it smells homely. Spray, no. You can. Do you yeah. 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 Bake even bread. better, I didn't know or that. We'll, even we'll definitely coffee. do that on some of our, some <laughs> you of our just stock. just buy the sprays, plug them yeah. in. And, I'll yeah. tell the bank manager, it doesn't matter, we do, we're okay, we're going to buy some spray. Yeah. yeah. The only other thing I'd say is have a look at the competitions, yeah. you know, in their price range or price bracket that they're looking to sell. What else could other people buy. I mean, there's nothing to stop you uh, going to look at other houses. Yeah, right? Actually, go and, go and look at the competition and, and find out why theirs are selling. I know when, whenever I've sold a house or flat before, um, you know, you get the agent that will say, well, you know, would you like to drop the price 200,000 or something or one thing or another? I say, not really. And they say, well, you should do because that, that will go. I mean, I just ask two questions. I say, okay, if I drop it 200, mm. A, are you going to guarantee you're going to sell it for mm. me because it's easy to come down, yeah. not, not quite so not easy to go back to up. That. And secondly, if I drop it that much money, can you show me please what else I can buy for that money? Mm. And, you know, on those two points, they usually come unstuck and say, well, actually, we'll probably keep it where it but, is and but, try a bit harder. But you know? that's where offers it offers over, offers in the region of are quite useful because you can actually play with that a little bit. Mm. What know. I don't like to see is those nonsense things where they put uh, looking, looking for offers between 100 and 110,000. Oh, I'm going to offer 110, aren't I? Or yeah. should I offer the 100? I mean, I it's a bit, offer 80 on bit, those bit of a am nonsense. I doing, am I getting it wrong? <laughs> no, you're getting it dead right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Listen, um, we're almost out of time, but just in the last minute or so, I just wondered if you'd both like to give in a couple of sentences your view or your, your expectation of the market for the coming year. <laughs> Shall I go first? Would you like, me, would you like to go, ladies first? Ladies first. Um, I think that we are, well, we're already seeing a slower market, but there's still high demand. And I think that's in the main down to the sheer lack of new listings still coming yeah. to the market. Um, I think that we, I think, I think 2022 is going to be a stable market. I think it's going to be a much slower pace. I okay. think we'll probably see growth slow down quite a bit, but we're still going to see uh, Just on, 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 on the on year that, after. Mm, not sure. On that speed element, are, are you talking about the, it being slow because there's a limited amount of properties coming to the market, which I'll say, why do you think that is? Or is it just a, a slowness of transaction speed? No, I think it. I think the demand has dropped off slightly, and um, so I think we've, you know, the incentives are no longer there. But 
obviously still people want to move. So, you know, the demand is still higher than I anticipated and I've been watching it quite closely. Um, but I did say last year in my um, in my forecast for this year that we would see, uh, you know, the market slow down, but the demand would still be there. Um, uh, so I, I think we're going to see a stable market in 2022. I well, that's, that's not a bad thing, is it? No. And, and that um, wasn't done in a minute, by the way. That took more than a minute. It did. Sorry. That's right. So, so, you so, should have gone first. So, so <laughs> Next you, time you, you know You've got better. 30 seconds. So I've got, I've got 10 seconds. 5% uh, increase this year maximum yeah. on most places. Uh, remember, it's a micro market. Some places won't go up at all. Inflation's a big problem at 6% plus. Okay. How about that? And is the housing market going to add to inflation? Uh, well, no one ever does badly out of a bit of inflation in the property market. As you, as you know, over the years. Mm. So so I, I think it'll be a reasonable year. Don't get too excited. And hopefully we'll be able to buy some deals this year. Great stuff. Hayley Andrews, John Howard, you thank you both much very much <laughs> for coming in. You're um, very helpful. Good to hear your opinions on the market as well. So that's really good. Look forward to seeing you next time when you come down. You. Okay, well, that's all we've got time for today. So join me again next time on Property Question Time.